Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the Takeaway Podcast. My name is Brandy Ginty, and today I have a very special guest, the one and only Tatiana Spears. Hey, Brandy. I am so excited to have you on. I've been like, just waiting for this day. <laughs> Likewise. I mean, I've been tuning in and honestly, you're one of like just so natural at this and I love it. It makes people feel so comfortable and That's just goal, delving girl. deep. It's awesome. So <laughs> thank, thank you, you for having me. I'm really excited because um, not many people, they get to see you a little bit on stage now yeah. and Tati does a lot behind the scenes for us. Um, she's like the mastermind behind like our social media and all those beautiful things. But um, I really don't think people get the opportunity to hear your heart about the word and you have such wonderful wisdom about the word when you talk about it it's so relational and so real and so I want to use some of that today to unpack what we talked about on Sunday all right so we got into another piece or two because he did reference it a couple times and we'll dig there a little bit um, of armor of the armor of God that we find talked about in Ephesians 6 and today we're going to talk specifically about the helmet of salvation. So let's start by asking the big question, Tati. Yes. <laughs> what is the helmet of salvation? And why do you think it is described that way? You know, I thought it was so interesting the way Pastor really unpacked this for us. Mm-hmm. The fact that he was talking about this is something we have to put on yes, every day yeah. and, and make sure that we physically and are conscious of putting it on. Mm-hmm. Now, I think there's a distinction of obviously we, when we become saved, that's something we cannot just lose or, you know, just flimsy flames, just not, it just go away. It, yeah. it is something that is always in us. When we make that decision, that is permanently in our hearts. That is That's always good. there. Yes. But I think what we can tend to lose is not necessarily our salvation, but our perspective mm. on our salvation and the power oh, of good. it. good. So I think the the way he, the pastor was describing it as putting it on, yes. something conscious we need to place. It, it's mainly looking at not losing that perspective on our salvation and the power that it contains. Yeah. And you know, when he prov- brought, provided those visuals of what a helmet looks like, and really it was made of quality material, yes. heavy. And what I thought was just so interesting is on a Roman helmet, you do, he was talking about like the dyed horse hair at the top. Yes. It is very distinct when you see it. That is not just any helmet. That is a Roman soldier there. And it's interesting. Your husband, Addison Spears, also told me that the horse hair on the top, like the height of it and how much of it is also a sign of rank. Absolutely. That there is, um, you can tell by looking at the helmet if you're dealing with like a foot soldier or you're dealing with a general. Like the more elaborate the headpiece to the helmet, the more elaborate their position in the army. Which is so fantastic to just know that, yeah. like, at just looking at someone, yes. you can tell. Yes. Their power, their yep. authority. Oh, come on now. Right? Yeah. So it's just one of those things. It's not just meant to be something that's just uh, protects you. It also right. is supposed to signal something. Mm, it's supposed good. to communicate something that I am not here just to, you know, unprotected. I am here and I know my authority. Mm. I know my rank. That's good. And I'm ready for battle. Come on. Because it like really it reminds you that you belong in an army. Like you're not, you don't stand alone. You never stand alone. You always stand together with your brothers and sisters in Christ. And just by looking at you, I should be able to tell that you belong to something that represents something greater and I think that's was always the first thought people had when they saw the Roman army marching towards them I imagine that what they thought was oh crap (laughs) like look what's coming this is the world power this is a force to be reckoned with this is a a rank and file structure and discipline and I, I would hope that people would look at the church and think the same thing Absolutely. You I mean, know that's I mean? something we should aspire to for sure. I mean, not just obviously in our lives when we live privately, we should still hold ourselves to that standard. We should still yes. be mindful. We should still be pursuing those things that are going to lead us closer in our relationship with the Lord, not oh, far away. So but good. as a community and as a church and the way we show up for our community, the way we show up together should be in that unified way and yeah. where we can communicate in the same language. And I think that's where the word of God definitely comes in. If we so don't good. have that in our hearts individually, how can collectively can we live that out? Mm, come on now, Tati. That's so good. You know, when I think about the helmet, I think about the way Pastor described it protects the head. Yes. You know, when he showed it, it wasn't just that it had this elaborate hair piece. It, it, it wrapped the front, literally almost down the nose, you know, it, the, all the way around the side of the cheek. The back of the head had a flap that protected it. It completely protected the head as a whole. What does that communicate about the helmet as a spiritual weapon? Yeah, I think, you know, when Pastor was talking about the battlefield of the mind and the mm. power of our minds and our mindset 
is so critical. And yes. so I think it's no accident that the helmet of salvation is taking place in the body part that that's where all the thinking, the strategizing, yeah. the imagining, the visioning happens in the mind. Yes. And I think too, just even the the surface area that is protected with a helmet yeah. also conveys to the importance of it, right? I can't move my legs. I cannot do these things without these essential functions that happen within mm. my mind. And so uh, going apart in this description of the armor of God, knowing that the helmet is such a key and vital piece for us yes. so that everything else can happen. Oh, that's good, Tati. I mean, I think about it, you know, we've heard it say just from a scientific perspective that if the mind doesn't work and function, nothing else works and function. Your mind sends signals through your entire body. Everything moves and functions according to what the brain is doing, what it's thinking, what it's feeling. Have you ever had one of those moments when you're thinking something and then it, the endorphins kick in and the way it makes your heart race? And Absolutely. It's, uh, the mind is a powerful thing. And I think that's one of the reasons why the enemy targets it the way he does. And that's why it's called a battlefield. We rec we recognize like right away <laughs> that the easiest way to typecast your brain is to talk about a battlefield because it's the place where all the real warfare seems to happen, right? Absolutely. I mean, and Pastor described this too, how mm -hmm. our thoughts are very much like seeds. Yes. And if we leave them there, these thoughts that maybe they enter neutrally, maybe they, ne they enter negatively, maybe positively, but whatever we leave in our mind and let grow yeah. is what will produce. So he said this uh, phrase where he was talking about like thoughts beget thoughts, thoughts mm, produce more thoughts, now. right? So if you think of one seed and you let that seed grow, there's a plant, it's going to, it's going to continue to grow. It's going to continue to produce that same thing. So am I going to choose when I see these seeds fall in my mind Yes, to leave them there or mm. to remove them and filter them out through That's the standard of the so word of God? Good, Tati. You know, when I think about the way the mind works and functions and like what Pastor talked about seeds, you have to be careful what you see to your mind because he referenced that what we seed, if we're not careful, if we're seeding negative thoughts or we're watching things on the movie of our mind that just are creating these negative cycles in our thinking, we, we eventually end up with what he called strongholds. And the Bible referenced strongholds. Can you give us an example of what we're talking about when we say stronghold. Yeah, I'm so glad you brought this visual up because I was so eager to just talk about it. And it, honestly, within me, when I was sitting in service listening to it, I just, it was just so um, mm. insightful to me just to see. And he was talking about how these strongholds don't just emerge. They begin yes. brick by brick. Oh, come on now. Every, so again, we talked about those seeds of thought. So if we think of them too as experiences or thoughts or things that then build upon each other and yep. brick by brick, we begin to put these walls up. Initially, we build these walls to protect ourselves. We build True. these walls to keep things that have hurt us out. Mm -hmm. But what happens with a stronghold is that it then will turn into something that isolates us. Come on now. And we talked about how we don't want to live a life where we're isolated. Mm. We're not a part. We need to be a part of our greater community. So the strongholds, these can come from our family of origin. They, they can come from trauma. They can come from negative experiences. So true. These things start out not because we're like, oh, I just want to be alone and do this thing. Sometimes it just starts out with, that really hurt. I don't yeah. want that to happen again. Oh, uh, let me put this here. Exactly. Yeah. And so the strongholds can have a, can go in a negative way where again, we're, we're living in isolation mm. and that's even more so. Then we live in our echo chamber oh, come of on, our that is thoughts good. and wow. what we think and we're just, it's going to be a, a vicious cycle. Vers is a virtuous one. Yeah. If we are in community and I say, hey, Brandy, I'm really struggling with this or hey, I had this thing. I am not keeping it within myself. I'm now inviting someone who is also a believer who knows the word and can help be able to remind me of the promises of God. Yes. And now I'm not living in isolation trying to figure it out by myself. Yes. Now in community, I can find healing and hope. It's so good because one of the things that the ways pastor described the helmet is the first thing you do is you take it, you put it on, you have to consciously put it on. And he described it almost like the act of remembering, right? So when you're in the midst of that battlefield and you're dealing with the thoughts of your mind, what I loved you called the echo chamber, you're the only one talking back at you, right? Because you haven't invited anybody else into your headspace. When that happens to you, you have to remember 
to put on your salvation. And what is that? It is remembering what Jesus did for you on the cross and what his death provides for you. Ephesians 1, 3 says he's given you every spiritual blessing. He's blessed you with every spiritual blessing. In the moments when your echo chamber is the loudest, that's the moment when you need to remember the most. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's incredibly important that we we learn how to protect our mind. So how do we renew our mind, Tati? You know, it's a great question because I think for me, like I was studying a little bit further and just saying, hey, what other kind of complimentary scriptures are out there to help us yep. understand this a little bit more? And so 1 Thessalonians 5, 8 came mm, up. So good. And so I was just going to read it re- real quick. So it says, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. Mm. This word hope, and, and I went to look at it another um Another uh, just translation, just to get a better idea. Yeah. But this word hope means also means confidence. Yeah. I think sometimes when we think of the word hope, we're like, oh, I hope I get that promotion. Oh, I hope this happens. It's like a wishful thinking. Yeah. Versus this confident expectation. Of just knowing. Of knowing. Yeah. Like I know the power of this of the word, and I know mm. the power of Come God, on. and I have a confident expectation that this will happen. So That's again, so it's the, the difference between hoping you get that promotion promotion versus. I have gone above and beyond in my role. I have mm. been able to, to do this project, that project, this one. And I have a confident expectation that this will happen. So yeah. that's just a different mindset too. Yes. And so, and just reading in a different translation, you know, this, it says, but let us live, um, the, who live in the light, be clear headed. Oh, that's good. Protected by the armor, armor of faith and love and wearing as our helmet, the confidence of our salvation. That's so good. So if we're confident in what Christ has already done for us, when yes. we face a battle, we can show up with confidence oh, versus that's good. this fear or overwhelming anxiety. Yeah, it's a, how you approach it, how you look at exactly. it. Exactly. You know, that word hope in the Bible is used very strategically. We um, Paul talks about it in Romans as the hope is an anchor. It anchors us. It keeps us steadfast. It keeps us in place. It holds us in place when we would be, you know, moved, slapped side to side by the waves and the weather of yeah. the world. And the other place that he talks about hope is in Romans 5 where he says hope does not disappoint. Mm. It's been shed abroad. Broad, cast abroad in our heart, meaning it's the thing that covers us. So when we hope in our salvation, we remember what Christ has done for us. We remember that we were born again. We remember that we become a new creation. We remember that we have victory in Jesus. And this is what we're, this has to become the echo chamber of our mind. This is how we fight our enemy. This is how we renew our mind. Because, and I want to read this scripture, Tati, and I want you to unpack it with me a little bit. In Romans 12, 2, Paul says this very strong statement. He says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Listen to this. And I love how he says it, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Hmm. So he tells us that we have to engage on the battlefield of our mind and we, we engage by actively working on transforming our mind. What does that mean to you, Tati? You know, that means what that means to me is the conscious decision to know what I'm allowing in my mind mm, and in my yes. heart, right? Yes. I think sometimes, especially in this age where there are so many channels and, and media to be able to tune into, yes. and sometimes passively, right? Or sometimes yeah. actively, like you got a favorite show, you're watching it, but there could be a playlist that's just going. Wait, I have to interrupt yes, you because you ahead. and I had a moment about this just a couple days ago. Yeah. We were both venting about the commercials that come on between our favorite shows. And yeah. I'm like, I'm so tired of being force fed and attacked <laughs> with commercials about horror movies because it's Halloween season. Yes. And my spirit man is just like, I'm not down with this. <laughs> and Can I opt like, out? I know. Can I opt I out of like, this? I'm not, I mean, this is not for everybody. Can but, I just opt out here? But, but that's a great question, yes. right? I, sometimes you got to opt out of what you allow in. That's right. right. Absolutely. So it's important to make sure that as you're protecting and you're renewing your mind, you're actively doing the work of being a watchman on the wall. Absolutely. You're in, you you have to be mindful and watching it. You can't just leave it unattended. It's yeah. very much like this year, actually, we had our landscaping done at the front of our house, which was just awesome. I loved <laughs> it. It looked beautiful. A few days later, there was some weeds that were popping oh out. Oh, my god! And gosh. I'm like, oh, no. 
you do the not wildness belong in this. But the thing is, like, I had to put it into my routine to mm-hmm. check and to look and to get my tools, get the gloves, and look and be mindful and watchful. So I think in the act of transforming your mind, you need to revisit. That's so what am I struggling so with yes. this week? Or there's a theme that's been coming up this past month. I've been stressing out about finances or I'm mm. really stressed about this relationship. What's been coming up? So I think having times, uh, intentional times of reflection, whether that be daily, weekly, yeah. monthly, just so being important. able to take some inventory and being able to see what belongs and what doesn't, what needs to be weeded out and what needs to be nurtured. I think sometimes too, we sometimes think of like just focusing on the negative. I think we need to see what do we need to nurture as Mm. well and feed into like, you know what? I love connecting with this person and I'd love to do that more. So being able to you know, schedule some time to be able to have those deeper relationships. So so good. You know, I, it reminds me what Paul said in Hebrews 12, where he talked about, the importance of discipline, <laughs> you know, because yeah. protecting your mind, let's be real, it's a discipline. It is. It's something you got to do every day. It's something you have to constantly work on. And Hebrews acknowledges the hardship of that sometimes, that it doesn't necessarily feel good, mm-hmm. but you still have to do it. You know, he says that, you know, no chastising or no discipline feels good in the moment, but after Afterwards, it yields a harvest of righteousness. It produces fruit in your life. It's like the garden that you referenced. Yeah. You know, the front of your house will only look beautiful if you do the work to maintain it and ensure that it looks beautiful. Yeah. The same is true of your mind. Absolutely. You know, Pastor John, remember when he talked about the wheel of wellness, and he said that the land of Shamar, which is the land of blessing in your life, is a worked land. It's not one that just happens by accident. Yeah. To get to Shamar, which is at the top of this wheel, you have to avad which is to work the land. Mm -hmm. And he said something very powerful. He goes, the easiest way for you to slip into bohu, which is the opposite of blessing, it's the land of chaos and death and decay, is to do nothing. nothing. That's right. That and I will never forget that. That's, he goes, yeah. anything will just naturally slip into chaos if mm-hmm. you allow it, if you don't do the work. Yes, absolutely. And th- that is so true. And actually, you know, we're talking about my husband earlier about his affinity for like, you know, just Roman history and culture. He also <laughs> loves Japanese culture. And so Very I, true. I tend to Very do some true. of these things, you know, absorbing some. But he, he shared with me this parable and it just reminded me and just I thought of the believer in this scenario where it says, um, you know, it's better to be a warrior in mm. a garden Come on now. Than a gardener in a war. Oh, come on. So I want and I need to be ready. I can't be ready if I'm not actively putting on the armor, if I'm not actively in the word, if I'm not letting worship music and prayer time be a priority in my yes. life to be able to renew that. Come on. So you've got to be ready. Yeah. You know, this is the thing I think sometimes as, a, as believers, sometimes, you know, yes, we want a life filled with peace. The Lord promises us that. Yep. But it's not going to be absent of struggle. It's not going to be absent of hardships. It's not a matter of if, it's when, and Mm -hmm. being ready and mindful of when to be able to be ready with the the armor of God and be ready for when those things come. I'd rather me know, even a basic knowledge of some of these key areas in life that I know everyone struggles with or have questions with and be ready with that versus then getting into this place of, of, of chaos or not knowing and ha- and not having that foundation. Like you need to be ready, you have not to, to scare ready. you, but right. to be like, again, uh, a trained warrior who yes. goes back to their training. All right, this is how I wield this sword. This is how I wield yes. this, you know, shield going back to your training. Yeah. So what is your training? You know, are you delving into the word of God? Are That's you, Come on you now. know, taking a class? Are you in a Bible study? I think these are the yes. things that we fail to realize. These aren't just things to make us feel good. Right. These are things to help equip us That's so to good show time. up with confidence and it's, with structure and yeah. be able to show up in a way that the Lord has called us to do. See, what you're saying is so powerful because what you're saying is that we can't just live our life on the defensive letting everything happen to us. We have to learn how to live our life on the offensive. And if you study battle strategy throughout history, these are the the most successful armies were the ones who didn't just think defensively, but they were constantly thinking offensively. How do I take land, Mm -hmm. right? And if you think about your own life as the real estate of your life, it's not just how do you protect it, but how do you take all of those things that God said belong to you? Like when Joshua had to go into the land of Canaan and take what belonged to him, he had to go to war. Yep. He, they, they were not people of war. <laughs> right. they, were, they were 
travelers, vagabonds, you know, they were wanderers in a wilderness. Yeah. They had learned to do life on the road, mm-hmm. right? And they had, they protected themselves occasionally. Yes, but that was defensive. Mm-hmm. Now God's taking them into the land of promise and he's telling them that you got to go on the offensive. That's right. And you need to take what I've said belongs to you. And the same is true in your own life. You got to learn, like you said, to wield those weapons mm-hmm. with an offensive authority and strength and confidence Mm -hmm. because you know what belongs to you. That's right. But how do you know what belongs to you if you're not wielding one of the most important weapons, which is the sword of the spirit, Yeah, which is the word. And I want to dig a little bit into the word. I don't want to go too, too far because I know pastor's probably going to pack it further this weekend. But there's an interesting relationship that Paul describes between the helmet of salvation and the word because he says together in verse 17 of Ephesians 6, he says, and take up, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. They're almost like the dynamic duo. They work together. Yeah. yeah. So my question to you, Tati, is why does why is the word of God our offensive weapon to fight back, especially in the area of our mind, the strongholds of our mind, our thought life? Why do we need the word to fight back? Oh my gosh, so good. So there's this complimentary scripture in yeah. Hebrews 4. Ooh, wow. come on, come on now. Go there. Yes, read it to us. And it so says, good. for the word of God is living mm. and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing yes. even to the division of soul and spirit so and of good. joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Oh, come on now. I mean, what a powerful description that this sword, it is two-edged. So yes. like, it's not just this one edge. You can use both sides of it in any maneuver, mm. any setting to be able to make an impact. Yes. And the fact that it talks about dividing. So being able to know and discern. I think some of us, we go through life like confused or not knowing. Yeah. And oh, absolutely. Gray, and we lack discernment. Um, not because of the lack of knowledge. We can Google anything right now. Mm-hmm. True. But Very that true. doesn't mean you're going to get wisdom. Oh, that's so. Come on now. Tati. <laughs> so that you need so the true. word to get wisdom, to get discernment. It is something that you you cannot just find in a search engine. You need to find it in your prayer room, in your in yes. your in your camaraderie with other believers. Especially when you're a believer. Mm-hmm. Because the word is described as like nutrients to you, food to you. That's right. And it almost describes it in a way like if you don't take it in, you're not surviving. You actually need it to survive. Why I and the way that you're you're talking about the word, we're talking about the word like like you, you literally, you cannot do life without it. If you are a believer in Christ, it is your compass for life. That's right. That's right. And is your, it is our mandate to share it too. Mm, come on. I mean, when we share the good news, that's why it's called the gospel, the good news. It's not something just for us to uh, experience and enjoy and to benefit of the fruits of. It's to also to share. And it is something where we absolutely need that nutri- those nutrients. Yeah. And just like we were talking about earlier, <clears throat> I can, you know, I can feed my faith and starve my fear or I can feed my fear and starve my faith but the thing is what is that that is a mm. choice up to you I think sometimes too as a believer we think of like externally oh there's God and then there's the devil and oh my gosh you know I hope the devil doesn't do this or oh my gosh I hope God does that or but we fail to recognize our role in this relationship in mm-hmm. with God to show up and be intentional with the word and and make sure we're taking in those nutrients yeah because a lot of us are here starving spiritually yeah. um, by not being in the word, by not being in relationship. And we're losing battles needlessly because we're not doing the work of getting into the word. That's I get it. So there are some true. books in the Bible. I don't understand the historical or cultural context <laughs> and I can so be like, oh true. my goodness, I don't get it. I get that. But the beautiful I get thing that. is, again, there are so many different resources there. And if we just take the mm. time to be still and ask God, Lord, you know, as I do this devotional study or if, as I plug into this class, show me, teach, show me what you want to teach me in this mm, season, come on right? Now. And yeah. help me to apply it. I think if we come to it with a beginner's mind versus like, well, I tried to read that book and it was a little, I didn't get it. Mm-hmm. No, there's no excuse. Even 100%. just understanding the history of how come we on. got the Bible, that is come a blessing on. to begin with that you can even hold that book in your hand mm. today. But to be able to have that refer- reverence for it, it is yes. so essential. We need to be in the word daily, that's daily, so daily, good. daily that's to renew our mind. Oh, that's so good. Because here's the thing. You need the word inside of you to fight. 
right? The weapon has to be in your hand mm -hmm. at all time. A Roman soldier never walked around without their sword, ever. I mean, you need to make sure that your weapon is sharp and that it is available to you at all times. So if I'm, let me, let me put it like this way, if I'm doing battle in my mind right now, like I'm somebody listening today, they're like, I'm fighting with my kids, I'm having issues in my marriage, I just don't feel like we're in the same place we used to be, or I'm just so desperate to get this weight off and I just can't, I just feel like nothing's working, I can't do it, I can't change this way I'm thinking, I keep thinking about that thing and, and craving it and I don't know how to shut off that craving. This is the battlefield that's raging in their mind. How do they wield the sword, Tati? How do they fight? So what are some strategies for using the word of God to fight back? Great question. I think for me, I think sometimes when we talk about thoughts and we talked about, you know, what we let in, what we let out, what we ruminate on, I think when we think a thought mm -hmm. that we know does not line with the word of God or maybe speaks to an insecurity or a place of shame. Yeah. To audibly address that Come thought. On. Yep. And that, and even if you Call don't it. haven't memorized all the scriptures, let me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you right now. This is something I felt like, and I'm a practical person. I like, I need a checklist. I need mm -hmm. to know. I need to have a framework so I can operate on something. There are areas of my life where I feel like there's constant doubt or shame that kind of comes in. Yeah. And I just made a short list of like, here are the top three areas I feel like I struggle with. Let me find the top three, five, three to five scriptures that mm. I can pull up on my phone. Oh, that's good. And when Tati, that thought come comes in, I can say, no, according to this scripture, yep. this is how I'm actually, I'm not, uh, the Lord did not give me the spirit of fear, mm. but of power and of love. And that's of your battle mind. strategy. That's come right. on. And adopting that word to your life. Like, even though, you know, in the word there, a lot of scripture are, are letters, are poetry, are things that maybe are within a specific context, but it applies and it is given to you. It is yes. a promise oh, to you. On. Put your name in that scripture. Put your situation in that scripture and be able to call upon it. So I think for me, for us, like when you get that thought, and especially if something that's a repeated thought or repeated whatever, yes. have a set of like two or three scriptures that yes, yeah, your go-to that you just say every time you have that thought or to address it because your body, your soul needs to hear the promise and the nu nutritious yes. word of God to be able to tackle that's those good. thoughts. And that's, so, a, that's a spirit of readiness, yes. Tati. And that's what we're really talking about. Paul is saying you got to be ready to fight. And that means you need to be preloaded. <laughs> you need to be yes. practiced, ready. No soldier just walked into battle. No. They practice battle strategies. They practice warfare and sword fighting. They practice so that they were ready in the moment when they were called upon. I love Pastor Lee always says this, have the word of God in you when you don't need it. So yes. it's ready when you do need it. Absolutely. Like you need to be preloaded and you need to recognize that in the word of God, God has given you everything you already need for life and godliness. And I always look back to that scripture in 2 Timothy 3.16, which says, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is prophet for doctrine, reproof, that means kicking back, mm -hmm. for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete and equipped for every good work. Mm. See, you can't, you cannot fight in the battlefield of your mind if you don't come equipped with everything you need. And that means you got to do your part to not only put on your armor, but to practice your armor. Absolutely. So asking those questions like, are you walking by faith? Yeah. Are you reminding your enemy that you have right standing with God? Mm -hmm. Are you choosing peace when the world is throwing chaos at you? Yeah. You know, are you remembering your salvation yeah. and what that really means to you? Are you wrapping yourself up in truth in a world of lies? I mean, come on now. If there's any other time in history that we need to know the truth of the word of God, it's now. Because there is such a warped sense of individual relativism that what's true for me is true for me, but it doesn't have to be true for you. And that is not the nature of truth, folks. No, it's not. You got to know. Like, I'm living my truth. It's like. No, we live I'm sorry. according to the truth. That defies the nature of truth. For those of you who are listening out here that have heard that, let me speak some peace to your mind right now. Truth is not relative. Truth is a person, and he is sovereign, mm -hmm. and he is universal, and he does not change yesterday, today, and forever. That means he doesn't change based on your opinions. He doesn't change based on your emotions or your feelings. He doesn't change based on popular consensus. He is who he is, and he does not bend for anyone. And that's who we pin our foundation of truth on. And we have to start walking in this 
and lifting up our shield and lifting up our sword and fighting back and really honest to goodness, stop. Oh, I'm like, stop being so lazy. Get off the bench and get in the game. Absolutely. Your own life. It's, it reminds me of this saying. It's like, choose your hard. Come on now. It is hard to stick to a budget. But you know what's also hard? Being mm, in debt. Come on now. Forever. And not having a way out. Come on. It's hard sticking to a workout routine and a clean diet. But you know what's also hard? Yeah. Being overweight and sick and, uh, and limited, not, and limited yep. to what you're able to do and not living up into your life. So you got to choose your heart. Mm. So I'd rather choose the heart of the discipline of having that dedicated prayer time of being able to be vulnerable with my trusted connection of people. Yes. Even if I just want to deal with it on my own and fix it on my own, do the hard thing and have yeah. that phone call. Because... That 10 minute phone call could lead me to, you know, a scripture I forgot about or lead me to prayer or lead me to anything else. But choose your heart. Yeah. And I think one of the reasons why we have to make that conscious decision is because God knows the good work choosing that heart is going to produce in us. That's right. This is the fruit of righteousness that he's talking about. This is um, the, 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 the fruit of righteousness that discipline achieves. If you want... A life of chaos, go ahead and think whatever you want. If you want a life full of blessing and fruitfulness, choose the hard work of doing the battlefield of your mind, fighting on the battlefield of your mind. Because you got to protect your mind and you have to recognize that, you know, your mind is a source of so much of what controls your life. It just is. It's the nature of it. That's what the word of God says. You know, out of the wellspring of your heart flows all the issues of life. And and, and to be honest, it, it directs your thought life. It really does. So what you're like, like you said, what you're ruminating on and what you're thinking about, it directs so much of your life. Yeah. A.W. Tozer, it's a very famous writer from the 1960s. He said this thing. He said that what comes to our mind when we think about God is the most important thing about us hmm. because what we think about God affects everything about us. It changes everything. So if when I think about God, I think about who he's called me to be, I think about him as creator, uh, as savior, as sovereign, as that when I think about him as my victor and my fighter and my champion, as my friend, as my partner and my companion and my guide and my advocate, when I think about God and all of the things that he's called us, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shat Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, I just, I, how can you not wrap everything around that? Because the best part of you, the best part of you is only experienced in connection with your creator. And the more intentional you are about cultivating a life centered around, especially your thought life, centered around your creator, the more you'll experience of your purpose and calling. At least that's my opinion. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. That's I so mean, good. how can we know the character of God if we don't spend time with him? Come on. If we don't know him, do we don't know what hurts his heart, mm. what he is passionate about. I mean, there's countless stories in the Bible, and I think there are countless experiences, even us personally, that we just need to remember. We, we forget to remember. Yes. <laughs> remember so his good. faithfulness and know that he is compassionate. He is loving. He does get angry. Yep. He does, you know, he does, you know, he, he loves us so much. And he, and knowing his, how the gospels and how just the Bible in general mm. lead to Christ and what he's done for us and the extent of that love. And yep. that's why we can't understand if we don't go deep, mm. if we don't make that time to go deep. And I think if you feel disconnected from God, if you feel like, and like you said, wh how, what we think of God really impacts the way we uh, interact with him. And I think yeah. too, like, there's that personal responsibility as well. Like, hmm, why do I think of like my relationship with God that way? Like, yes. well, have oh, I been spending time? Empty. Have I been healing from these things that maybe I'm, I'm putting, imposing my own personal, mm -hmm. you know, assumptions or because of hurt or trauma, like yeah. there are just some things that holistically we need to look at. And I think once you, we do begin to be intentional, we can just fall in love even further and mm -hmm. understand his depth of love for us that's so when we good. make time for him. That's so good. And I think that's exactly what Paul said when he, that's what he meant when he said, take Take the helmet of salvation. Remember. Mm -hmm. Put it on every day. Remember. Don't go out the door without it. Remember. Yep. And every time 
you struggle, take captive that thought and remember. And it's not just about taking it, it's about replacing it. You have to replace it with the word. You have to remember who God is. You take that negative thought captive, but you put in place that that memory of who God is and what he's done for you and what he's provided for you. And the more you practice that, the more adept you'll be at wielding your weapons. Absolutely. That's so good. So as we close today, Tati, I want to take a moment and just pray for the people who may be really doing battle in the battlefield of their mind right now. And they're struggling with those negative thoughts. And how do I take these captive? Mm -hmm. What do I do? Mm -hmm. Like, what do I do to break free from this season of my life. Let's pray for those people. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you, Father. Well, Heavenly Father, we come before you right now. Lord, we love you and we thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness, and your mercy. Yes. And right now, Father, I just slipped off, a lip up my brothers and sisters, Father God, who truly are going through a battlefield in their mind. Mm, and Lord, as Lord. we delve into your word and as we remember who you are, Father, I thank you, Lord, that as we look upon the, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, yes. that Father God, we see these things visually in our mind, Father. And we thank you, Lord, that you've given us these uh, these weapons of warfare to yes. be able to thank be you, on Jesus. the battlefield, Father. Lord, you have called us, uh, you did not give us a spirit of fear, mm. but of power and of love, love and of a sound mind. mind. And we, Thank Father you, God, choose to have the confident expectation of your salvation, the price that your son has paid, Father. Yes. We thank you. We praise you, Lord, for who you are, for you are good. Mm. You did not leave us abandoned, alone, without anything to defend ourselves with, Father, but you have equipped us. We have what we need, Father, to overcome. Yes, And Lord. we cho- choose to look to you, Father. We choose to look upon your face and not on the circumstances of this world or the lies that we've been told or the shame or the guilt. But Father, we look to you and we know your word pierces through that, Father, Mm. gives us discernment to know. And so, Lord, I just pray for renewed peace. Yes, Lord. And I thank and I praise you, Father, for renewed hunger and passion for the word. That, Father, especially for those who have been saved a long time but are experiencing a lot of struggle, that they remember, Father, when they first accepted you, Lord, and that love and that hunger yes. they had for you, Father. Thank you, I Lord. thank you, Lord, right now for divine opportunities for everyone to grow in your word, to grow in relationship, Father. Yes, so, Jesus. Lord, we love you and we thank you for who you are. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Whew, that was so good. Tati, thank this you so, so much fun. for joining us. Girl, you know you're going to be back. <laughs> you know it. Thank you again for today. And thank you for helping us to unpack this helmet of salvation is so good and we just challenge you to dig deep into the word this week because we promise you that's the place where you're going to find how to use these weapons of warfare we love you guys we hope you have a great week and we'll see you next time on the takeaway podcast